Celestia is also Jesus? No, Celestia, I was told, was the reincarnation of God here. Now, through all of this, for many years, you have a great many sexual relations. Yes. And you've said a child of abuse thinks love is tied up with sex. Absolutely. A child of abuse knows no boundaries. A child of abuse wants to find love with whomever they can. A child of abuse thinks that love is bonded to sex. The child of abuse thought she'd found love with actor-comedian Steve Martin. She also found a father figure. Martin was 30 years older. You shared two years with Steve Martin. Yeah. Why did the relationship break up? I wanted love of an older man. I wanted comfort. I wanted humor. I wanted all of the things that he offered. And so why did we break up? There wasn't anything wrong with Steve. It was just that it was not what I wanted to commit my life to. Let's go to a night that changed your life. 1997, Academy Award night. Mm -hmm. You go to a big party at, uh, given by Vanity Fair magazine. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that night. I saw the most ravishing woman I had ever seen in my life standing across the room. Her name was Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen, Ellen. She was radiating. Ellen. I think at certain times in, in people's lives, you just radiate an energy and a glow of fabulousness, and that was her. I had never seen anybody so lit up. It was just a week before Ellen would tell the world she was gay. And we started a relationship. Um, I think part of that was Ellen represented everything that my father never was. She was free. She owned her sexuality. I had connected everything with my father and my abuse to the fact that he was not allowed to be the homosexual that he was. And I, that to me was stunning. Had you ever been with a woman before sexually? No. You went home with Ellen that night. That night. And you wrote in your book, it was the best sex you ever had. Uh, no kidding. Up until that point, that was the best sex, best sex I've ever had. Better than with any man? Yep. Why? I felt cared for, loved on a sexual level that I had not before with a man. I felt free to express a part of me that I had not been able to express with a man. I felt sensual and sexual in a way I hadn't before. Maybe, maybe I was embracing some of my masculine side. And I enjoyed that, and so did she, I think. But it was, it was a wonderful connection. There's, it was just a wonderful connection. When 2020 continues... I finally feel like I'm... I'm happy. With tears in your eyes. It's been such a journey, you know? Next. just married you'll find out and we have something to tell you about the newlyweds that is not in her book and not in the news although it will be tomorrow but first Anne H's mind and her love affair with Ellen DeGeneres would reach the breaking point she is my hero and the bravest person I know my wife Anne H in one blinding moment Anne H and Ellen DeGeneres became the flashpoint for homosexuality in America. Did you think of the consequences? Ellen tried to make me think of the consequences. I was a person who had lived a life and grew up in a family of lies. I was not gonna lie. I had fallen in love with a woman and that was okay with me. I was not gonna be the one who hid because I was afraid of losing my career. Shortly after meeting Ellen, Anne was cast in the romantic film Six Days and Seven Nights, but she believed it was only because co-star Harrison Ford stood up for her. Soon, both Anne and Ellen would be seen by Hollywood in only one role, as gay America's poster children, a role that would hurt them professionally and personally. Most people know that at that time, Ellen was having a very difficult time with her career. Mm -hmm. uh, her show had gone off the air, so she was a very, at that point, um, I would assume, unhappy woman. Yes, she was. 
I did anything I could to create a career for myself that wouldn't threaten her or make her worried about a part of her life that I wanted her to know was secure, which was me. Just about a year ago, mm -hmm. on August 19th, you and Ellen broke up. Mm -hmm. Why? How do you put into a sentence why you break up with somebody? We had gotten to the point where we were not happy together anymore. We had become isolated from the world together. I am a person who loves people, who loves being in the world, who loves acting. All of these things that I didn't have, and I wanted them back. And I believe that threatened her. Do you have any relationship with Ellen today? No. Are you friends? No. I would not say we are friends now. Do you talk? No. Throughout this whole time, you were still Celestia. Yes. <laughs> Did Ellen know? Oh, yes. As close as you were, she did know you were Celestia. Ellen knew everything. What did she think? That I was crazy. And you're crazy, but I love you? You're crazy, but I love you. So it's like a small thing. Oh, you're crazy. You don't do that. You do what? You, 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 you speak to the dead? Another thing that I thought I could do in my insanity. Speak to spirits, hear voices. Oh, you do that? Oh. But I love you. Just be quiet about it. Fresno, 2000. Anne? Anne? I was flat out and strapped on a gurney in an all-white, kind of cramped room that seemed less than glorious as a stopping point on my way toward heaven. I wondered if it was going to be announced on TV or a loudspeaker or something. She has arrived! The spaceship is on its way! Gather in Fresno, just off the freeway. What was going on? I told you I thought Celestia was from another planet called the Fourth Dimension. I escaped to the Fourth Dimension. On August 20th, 2000, a day after she and Ellen broke up, a dazed and confused Anne Haight got in her car and drove five hours across the bleak landscape from Los Angeles to Fresno. The episode made headlines. An incoherent movie star wandering door to door in a remote part of California, ending up in a stranger's backyard. No one ever knew what propelled H across the desert until today. Fresno was the culmination of a journey, of a world that I thought I needed to escape to in order to find love. So in the pain, I think, what triggered the pain of my breakup with Ellen was a bottoming out of, there's no love here. I'm gonna go get love. Were you in ecstasy? Is that the cause I have done drugs in my life. I'm not a consistent drug user, and I never was with ecstasy either. I was told to go to a place where I would meet a spaceship. I was told in order to get on the spaceship that I would have to take a hit of ecstasy. Again, a voice. All of this justification for the end of this journey. I did go to a house. I did ask people to join me. I did go to the hospital. H spent one night strapped to a gurney in the psychiatric unit of the Fresno Hospital. And Yes. The next day, your manager, Lauren Lloyd, and her friend, Kathy, who is your friend, come to see you in this hospital. Mm -hmm and said, in effect, come back to us. We care about you. We love you. And like that, you are okay. 31 years of what you call insanity, and in that one day, you were fine. Here's the thing. I always thought you had to leave the world to get love. And I was being shown that you could stay in the world and have love. I love my life. I just didn't like the life I was raised in. But I love my life, and I chose to keep it. This has been just a year. One year, almost, almost to the day. How are you? 
awesome. <laughs> Sane. <laughs> I'm here. I'm, I could not be more elated with my life. You know, Anne, there are some doctors or therapists who might diagnose this as a form of mental illness, as uh, split personality, schizophrenia, bipolar. Mm -hmm. Does any of this apply to you? I don't believe so. I mean, the most interesting thing is that I went to therapists for years. It's, it's amazing what you can hide. So you went to these therapists, mm -hmm. told them all about your life, told them all about the abuse that your father had committed, told them about your mother, and never said, by, by the, the way, way, I have another personality. Yeah. By the way, I hear voices. You never did that. No. I was very afraid of what people would think of me. They very afraid. Yeah, they'd think you were crazy. Absolutely. The therapist would think you were crazy. Sure. Are you on medication today? No. Do you still have moments when God speaks to you? No. Do you still talk in another language? Oh, no. You are all... I'm all here. You're all here. Oh, yes. But H continues to be full of surprises and transformations. This past weekend, she got married to cameraman Coley LaFoon. They seem to be wildly in love. She met Coley while making a documentary about Ellen, but she insists he had nothing to do with their breakup. Was Coley at all worried about your sexuality? He had been seeing you with Ellen. He's an extraordinary guy. He's one of the few people I've ever met who actually embraces the same notion about sexuality that I do. Um, which, which is that you love who you love. You fall in love with a person, not a sex. And he was not threatened by it at all because he understood that I could love a woman. Do you think you could love a woman again? Well, hopefully I won't because <laughs> I plan to be with Coley for the rest of my life. Although people asked me this question when I was with Ellen. Well, hypothetically, if you broke up, who would you be with, a man or a woman? And I said, I can't answer that question. When people ask you, well, I'll ask you, do you consider yourself bisexual? I, uh, I think that's a comfortable label. I do not label myself bisexual, nor do I label myself straight or gay. Marriage. One year after this breakdown, one year after Ellen, mm -hmm. why so soon? I don't think there's any other explanation except that it felt right. I want to start a family. Coley wants to start a family. So you're going to start a family as soon as possible? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I love it. You are not oh, pregnant now. No, you'll be the first to know. Uh -huh. And so I was. Anne H. called me just the other day to tell me she is three months pregnant and delighted about it. She asked me to keep it a secret until tonight. And that's not the only new role she will have. Okay, you have a television show in the works. Yes, I have just made a deal with Warner Brothers to develop a show... A humorous show, I should say, a funny show. My life turned around this year, and the joy that I've experienced. I want it to come out of me <laughs> in a show, too, because I, I finally feel like I'm, I'm happy. With tears in your eyes. It's been such a journey, you know? I wrote this book to say goodbye once and for all to my story of shame and embrace my life choice of love. The fact that there are people hearing my story is the icing on the most beautiful cake in the world that I imagine says, Happy Freedom, Anne. You have made it to the other side. We wish Anne and Coley every happiness. And one more note, we tried to contact Anne's mother for her reaction to her daughter's statements, and just yesterday we heard from Anne's sister who told us the family would be watching tonight and would post their response on the internet. And finally, if you would like to talk with Ann H. herself, she will be available live online tomorrow. Log on to abcnews.com for details. And Ann H. will also be on The View this Friday. We'll be right back. When we return. What is your feeling when you walk out of the house and head to work finally? It's a feeling of relief. <laughs> like, I can't wait to get to work. Next. Now, tonight, give me a break. 
about the new laws that ban the use of cell phones